Hello and welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. Ryan Fraser has signed for Newcastle United. He has basically talked to everybody, but he has joined Newcastle. So it's fantastic news that the former Bournemouth winger will be signed for Steve Bruce's side and we'll be talking about what he will bring to the team. Sam, Ryan Fraser, sign on the dotted line. At last. Fantastic news, but has there been a lot of, I don't know, people are thinking the wrong thing of him because he was at Bournemouth at the end of last season, didn't play the last six weeks because his contract was running out. Is that the kind of player we would like at Newcastle? Um, it's relevant now because it's the kind of player we've got at Newcastle, but um, if, if we were sat here 12, 18, 24 months ago saying we've signed Ryan Fraser, we'd go, wow, because that would have cost 35 million. A player that was constantly linked to top six teams, a player that um, I think a couple of seasons ago only players like De Bruyne or something like that had more assists than him. It doesn't matter how much they cost at the end of the day for players like that. The fact that we've got him is absolutely superb. Great age, 26 years old, entering his peak years. It's just nothing but a positive and brings welcome competition in behind that three, behind the centre striker. Is it a coup for Newcastle, Lee? Because he's talked to Arsenal, he's talked to Spurs, I think he's even talked to Everton as well. Liverpool as well. Liverpool. He's talked to some big clubs. Why has he come to Newcastle? But there's that story going on that he wants to be close to his family, but his family were in Aberdeen. And Aberdeen, as we all know, it's a five hour journey, it's just like going to London. So, not quite sure about that one. Um, the thing is with Aberdeen, though, you're, you're it's way, way in the northeast. Yeah, of exactly. You're miles away from everywhere, so five hours seems like an it's hour. Yeah, London. Yeah. It's basically Newcastle to London. Um, I don't necessarily think that's down to it. I think he's going to be playing first team football, first and foremost. Um, the good thing about that is you can play in several positions, left wing back, left wing, right wing. And, you know, people are criticising now, he's only got one goal, he didn't want to play for Eddie Howe, and eventually they, got, they went down, they were relegated. But if you think about the season before, though, his top assist scorer in the whole of the Premier League, joint top, I think he was. Yeah. Um, that's a phenomenal achievement. I know Bournemouth play attack and football, but to answer your question, is it a coup, a free signing, probably high signing on for big wages? Yes, it is. Does he walk straight into this Newcastle team at the minute, Sam? Yes, I would say he does when fully fit, obviously. Um, Where do you play him, though? Yeah, exactly. There's there's a kind of a competition for a place there in that three behind the central striker. Do you play Almiron out wide, which we all know he's better as a 10. Obviously, they want to press Sean Longstaff further up in that 10 role, so there's competition there. ASM gets in the team every day of the week. We didn't sign Lazaro, so Jacob Murphy's back in the fold, so you would probably say that's where Fraser slots in there. But it's good, it's competition for places, which is what this squad desperately needs. Would you rather have Fraser or Lazaro? Fraser. But only because you know what you get with Fraser? We don't with Lazaro. He's gone to a team in the Champions League, so he, Lazaro could be brilliant, but we just didn't see enough of him. Bruce dropped the, dropped the ball with uh, with Lazaro, really, didn't play him enough. Even when there was nothing to play for towards the la at the end of last season, we saw glimpses, but he should have been given a push, he should have been given a start, so... But, between the two, I'd say you, you've got to go Fraser and you're proven in the Premier League. Lee, where do you think is his best position and what is his best attributes when he is on his form, basically? Well, it's funny you want to play Allen's at Maxwell, and I said on the West Ham game, in the preview that's coming up, Allen's at Maxwell on the left, but Fraser produces best football on the left with all them assists. And they had Brooks on the right hand side, didn't you, when you had Bournemouth? So, you can play left or right. And I think modern day football has like to come in now you don't have many that go down the byline and whip it in that, that's gone from our days now so I think it will be the left hand side but then again you can put Alan Zip maximum over the right put Mig in the 10 you can also fill in at wing back position as well so he's versatile but Sam's spot on you don't want to look at your bench and look at Christian Atsu and Rolanda Ahrens and Jacob Murphy as a saviour that is competition so even if he doesn't play or if you want to rotate Almiron or you rotate ESM you've got someone who's higher in quality to come in yeah that's the number one thing we miss you've got your starting 11 all working the knackers off 
to get to start either stay in the game or you know to win a game. And then you look at the bench after 60, 70 minutes. What are you going to who are you going to bring on to change a game if it's not going well? There's there's been no one for quite a few seasons now. What happens when you look at Chris Nassau and the crowd just goes? <sighs> See right. Ryan Fraser's like, oh, okay, yeah. oh. Mm. it's a bit, but you know, it lifts you. Is it a missing piece of the jigsaw though, Sam? Because on that right hand side, we've been talking in the previous West Ham, give that a watch before you give this a watch, depending on what's happened. But um, Alante Maximum, Jacob Murphy, and Almiron are all three going into the game against West Ham. For Jacob Murphy, he should be looking at Ryan Fraser going, right, I want to try and get in this starting 11, but you're some player for me to look at so I can try and get in this team because you have to be doing something to be getting Ryan Fraser out of the team if he's playing well. Jake Murphy is a boyhood Newcastle fan. If that's one of us three, I expect the the end kind of, not the end result, but the thinking to be the same as I'm going to burst a gut to try and get that shirt. And that's what, the, again, that's what the squad needs. It's competition for places. Whereas before, you could name our first 11, even at, uh, under Rafa, you could name that first 11 like that. And it, the team picked itself, in essence. So, Fr- Fraser obviously won't be fit for the first few games, so Murphy's got the shirt. Then it's up to Fraser to earn that shirt off Murphy. So, the ball's in Murphy's court, essentially. And that can only bring kind of positivity and not success because you know you say it's a missing piece of the jigsaw there's a lot of pieces missing I'll just be more going forward because that yeah. right hand side no one's re- unless you put ASM there occasionally but ASM works well with Mankio yeah. doesn't he but the thing is it's all fluid and all interchangeable so you know you spend 20 minutes on the left and then you can spend 25 minutes on the right so it doesn't really matter too much but the point is it's options and it's we can actually try and go forward and actually look like scoring if there's a focal point up top if no one's injured. Yeah, for sure. Me, Sam talks about success. What would be success for you getting out of Ryan Fraser for the season? What would you be expecting? Uh, assists, because we know that he's done that a couple of years ago. Um, for whatever reason, his issues with Bournemouth didn't want to stay there. Uh, I think it's get him in the team, first of all, get him fit, playing regularly. But if you think about if you think about it, if you've got Almiron, Fraser in ESM, that's pretty frightening for a lot of bottom lower end, bottom yeah. half teams. You're coming up against those three just going all over the place, interchangeable. But I think consistency is what we need from our wingers now. And again, those two lads, Almiron and Alan St. as great footballers that they are, they need competition. Because they can have a bad game and know they'll start the next one. That's the thing as well, though. That's what needs to improve going into this season because we didn't do too well against teams around us last season. Norwich, disastrous. Villa, nigh on disastrous. West Ham at home, we struggled. We were lucky to get away with a point. It's them teams around us, like Palace away, used with their disastrous. So it's, it's games like that, and it was what we were good at under Rafa. The teams around us we were always more dominant in, whereas last season not so much. That needs to improve if we're you know gonna be okay this year. For sure. Can Ryan Fraser make the difference for Newcastle United in the upcoming season? Get your comments below. Where do you think his best position is? And what is the minimum that you expect from Ryan Fraser? Do you agree with Lee? The fact that he's just a bit more consistency and can he be the difference, as Sam says, against the teams near the bottom division so Newcastle aren't involved in any relegation worries in this upcoming season. Keep on top of all of Newcastle fans TV content will have all the match previews going to West Ham and future videos as well so make sure you press that like button for this video and subscribe to Newcastle fans TV as well from me Lee and Sam we'll see you all very very soon